All right, good afternoon. Um, the United Nations remains alarmed about the safety and protection of over 3 million civilians in Idlib in Syria and as well as the surrounding areas, over half of whom are internally displaced. This is following ongoing reports of airstrikes and shelling. Between the 31st of January and the 2nd of February, at least 25 communities were reportedly affected by artillery shelling. Okay. Um, as I was saying, between the 31st of January and the 2nd of February, at least 25 communities were reportedly affected by artillery shelling, while 47 communities were reportedly impacted by airstrikes. And on January, um, and since December 1st, over half a million people have been displaced due to the hostilities, and around 80% of these people are women and children. The World Health Organization reportedly reported today that at least 53 health facilities suspended services in January due to the ongoing insecurity, as well as threats of attacks or areas were deserted by civilians fleeing violence. In a statement we issued over the weekend, you saw the Secretary General express the we, ex we expressed the Secretary General's deep concern at the ongoing military escalation in northwest Syria and his call for an immediate cessation of hostilities. The Secretary General reaffirms that attacks on civilians and civilian infrastructure, including on health care and educational facilities, are unacceptable. Military operations of all parties, including actions against and by designated terrorist groups, must respect the rules and obligations of international humanitarian law, which includes the protection of civilians and civilian infrastructure. The Secretary General reiterates that there is no military solution to the Syrian conflict. The only path to stability is a credible and inclusive UN facilitated political solution as uh, laid out in Security Council Resolution 2254. And today, turning to Yemen, today was the maiden voyage of the medical air bridge operation that brought a number of Yemeni patients out of an initial group of 30 along with their respective travel companions from Sana'a to Amman. The remainder of the first group of 30 patients will travel in a second flight, while more patients will follow in subsequent flights. The UN Special Envoy, Martin Griffiths, as well as the UN Humanitarian Coordinator for Yemen, Lise Grande, and the World Health Organization representative in Yemen, Altaf Musani, all welcomed the launch of this medical air bridge operation. The World Health Organization, in collaboration with local public health and population authorities coordinated these flights. The medical air bridge flights come as part of the UN's ongoing humanitarian assistance in Yemen, including providing support to the healthcare system. Many UN entities and several governments in the region and around the world collaborated to get these patients the treatment they need abroad, and we are grateful to them all. The UN will do whatever it can to ensure the continuation of the medical air bridge as a temporary solution to reduce the suffering of the Yemeni people until a more sustainable solution is reached in the near future. And the 5 plus 5 Libyan Joint Military Commission is starting its meeting under UN auspices at the UN office in Geneva today. Five senior officers appointed by the government and national accord and five senior officers appointed by the Libyan National Army are participating in the talks, which are moderated by Ghassan Salame, the Secretary General Special Representative for Libya. More information will be communicated uh, either later today or tomorrow. Turning to the Central African Republic, UN peacekeepers in that country forced the UPC group, the Union for Peace Armed Group, to abandon its position in the center of Alendao and to end all circulation of its armed forces in the city. The armed group also announced it will withdraw from Bambuti, the city it had occupied since November, and this will be done by Wednesday. In addition to the military pressure, the, the operation launched against the UPC continues on the political front, with UPC required to stop its attempt to expand to other regions and to engage with the mission, the UN mission and the government. And today, the UN Children's Fund, as well as the World Food Program and the Food and Agriculture Organization, warned that over the last year, there has been a spike in the Sahel in the number of people lacking food and vital livelihood opportunities. In a joint statement, the agency says the spike was due to the rising insecurity and climactic shock in the region, leaving about 3.3 million people in need of assistance. The UN estimates that close to 4.8 million people in the central Sahel will be at risk of food insecurity during the lean season, 
which runs from June to August, if no appropriate actions are taken urgently. The agency says they're most concerned about the central Sahelian countries of Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger, where conflict and its impact on communities have become the main cause of food insecurity. And turning to Eastern Africa, our humanitarian colleagues tell us that Somalia has now declared the desert locust outbreak a national emergency. We had previously flagged that the outbreak is threatening the food security of Kenya, Ethiopia, South Sudan, Uganda, with other countries also at risks. Government are con conducting aerial and ground control operations and spraying pesticides to kill large swarms, but the capacities are overstretched due to the speed and the spread as the well as the scale of the infestation. FAO is working with governments impacted and has teams on the ground assessing damage and helping targets, helping teams target the swarms. Last month, FAO for, uh, formulated an initial response plan asking for $70 million to address the immediate needs. This was upgraded to $76 million to account for expanding the operation to Djibouti and Eritrea. And on the 22nd, the Central Emergency Response Fund of the UN released $10 million to support the pest control operations. And in Mexico, the UN Children's Fund estimates that some 2,200 migrants and asylum seekers, including 700 children, have been stranded in Matamoros near the U.S. border as they wait for their asylum causes to work their way through the U.S. court system. UNICEF says that conditions on the ground are difficult because of insecurity and limited access to essential services. Many families have been waiting for there for weeks, if not months. More information online. And I want to flag that on Sunday, the Secretary General's Special uh, Youth Envoy launched its call for applications for the 2020 Class of Young Leaders for the Sustainable Development Goals. This initiative recognizes and engages 17 exceptional young people who are leaders in their efforts to end poverty, combat climate change, and reduce inequality. And a couple of things to flag for today. 1.30, there'll be a briefing here by Mark Peckstein, the permanent representative of Belgium, who will preside over the Security Council for the month of February, and he will be here to brief you on the program of work. Then at 3 p.m., the Secretary General will meet with the group of friends on climate and deliver some remarks. And tomorrow, fingers crossed, 11 a.m., Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres, will be in this very room to sp speak to you, more importantly, to answer your questions about his priorities for 2020. Uh, that will take place at 11, and as it always happens, when the Secretary General speaks, the spokesman has a day off, so we will not have a noon briefing. Halas, Vitul. Thank you, Stefan. Syria, there was a direct confrontation uh, in Idlib between the Assad troops and the Turkish military forces and eight uh, Turkish soldiers were killed and there were some casualties on the Syrian side. How concerned is the Secretary General and has he talked to uh, anyone uh, from any side to de-escalate the situation? Yes, we're, we're, we are very much alarmed uh, by the reports that we saw of um, clashes between Syrian government troops and uh, Turkish forces in northwest Syria. I think this uh, escalation underscores yet again the threat to regional and international uh, peace and security paused, caused by the ongoing conflict uh, in Syria. Um, we also remain deeply concerned by the continuing reports of civilian casualties, large-scale displacement of civilians resulting from the current Syrian government offensive inside the Idlib de-escalation zone. The Secretary General reaffirms yet again that no attacks on civilians or civilian infrastructure should take place. Talks between the SG or any sites from Con contacts are being had at um, at various levels to pass on the message which we are passing on publicly as well as privately for the need for de-escalation. Edi. Uh, two questions, Steph. As a follow-up on that. Um, it's fine to express alarm. Is there anything else that the United Nations can do in this situation, given that there are hundreds of thousands of civilians whose lives are yeah. at risk? So we, we are uh, doing whatever we can on the humanitarian front uh, through the cross-border operations, as we've been uh, flagging. 
as I said, we're also passing the messages for the need for de-escalation uh, to all the parties involved, publicly and, and privately. Um, and, and I think, yet again, uh, this is another reminder of why there should be a redoubling of efforts to push forward on the political track. Um, but no, my second question was on Libya. Um, what are the, what are the UN's expectations for this first five plus five meeting? Uh, I will let Mr. Salame address that. He's in Geneva, and I understand he'll be speaking to your colleagues either today or tomorrow. Before we go on, I failed to read a very important note: uh, is that we're delighted to welcome Capo Verde to the true honor roll as member states payments to the regular budget arrived. That's the, the January cutoff date. Uh, we now have 35 countries to the honor roll, so those who pay after February 1st will be most welcome, uh, but the honor roll is only for those who pay in January. We hope the others will pay soon and on time. Mr. Bayes. Uh, could we at some point have a update on last year's budget and yeah. where we are on that? Yeah. Um, my question is about Idlib um, and what you've said earlier on. This seems to be a, a fracturing of the um, Sochi, Astana understandings between Russia and Turkey. And as you know, Russia and Turkey basically have seized hold of the diplomacy of Syria in the last couple of years and seem to be taking control of it. Um, that <coughs> suggests this is worrying. You said the Secretary General is worried. What is his message to uh, the President of Turkey and the President of Russia at this time? De-escalate. And, you know, we, we, there are other processes, I mean, other meeting points, whether it's Astana or Sochi. Uh, our message has always been that these, uh, these meetings are welcome and we attend these meetings. Uh, and it is important that all these efforts feed in uh, to the UN facilitated uh, process under Resolution 2254. Majid. Uh, thank you, Stefan. I want to ask about uh, Iraq um, and the president uh, designated mm -hmm. a new prime minister, mm -hmm. uh, Mohammed Alawi, after months of, of stalemate. As you know, there's a political crisis, protest, and this move was highly unpopular. The protesters rejected the appointment of uh, Mohammed Alawi um, as, as opposite to their demand of reform. Uh, but uh, there's a statement by the UNAMI uh, by the um, special representative of Secretary General, uh, she basically welcomes the designation of, of the new prime minister. Why is, she, why is the UNAMI Look, welcoming? I, I think the, there was Parker? indeed there was indeed a statement, uh, but I think the 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 other very very important focus of her statement is her urging for swift action to deliver first and foremost on substantial reform and to fulfill the rightful demands of the people for justice and accountability. And I think that message is, is very clear. But why, I mean, that message is, is uh, you know, she can't have that message without welcoming the appointment of a politician as a prime minister. Look, why it, she felt the it's, need? It's a step, I think, that was long, uh, long awaited. The critical part is uh, the need for the government to deliver on the demands of the people. And uh, has Secretary General been, uh, had any contact with the Iraqi leadership about the crisis in the country? Yes, he spoke to the foreign minister last week, I think on uh, mid middle of last, uh, middle of last week. Uh, uh, they talked about the current, uh, the current situation. Nabil and then Evelyn. Thank you. Um, so on uh, Libya, the, uh, the parliament, uh, in Tobruk, uh, announced today that they don't recognize uh, the representative of Libya in the UN. And uh, they sent a message to uh, the SG on this regard. Can you remind us, please, about the procedure here? Sure. I mean, the, the I, I haven't seen the message to the Secretary General. The issue of cr challenging the credentials of any delegation needs to go through the credentials committee. Uh, it is an issue for member states themselves uh, to decide upon. It's not the Secretary General uh, to decide on the validity of cr credentials. If there's, if there's questions, uh, those are, need to be raised within the Credentials Committee. And state here, you mean the government? Sorry? 
the state here, Libya here, means uh, the state of Libya. You mean the government? I mean, there, there is a, a, a recognized permanent representative of the UN recognized government in Libya who sits here in New York. Um, Evelyn, I promised. Thank you, Steph. Um, the Secretary General is supposed to have a report on the mess created on the cross-border mm -hmm. deliveries. Do you know when that's due? Uh, I think 23rd of February, if, uh, uh, if that okay. date is And correct. has he spoken to Russia and Turkey recently about their he's, aggression? He's, he's had, uh, as I say, conversations have had at various different levels. Can you say uh, what level? I do, I cannot. Uh, Joe, then James, and then Stefano. Actually, that related to the question I was going to ask, but I'll put it in a different way. First of all, could you tell us, uh, or maybe you did and I just did, didn't hear it, uh, who besides the generals on each side uh, or uh, and the UN representative are attending this conference in Geneva? Are there high-level representatives from other countries, Russia, Turkey in particular? Not, I mean, the, this is a Libyan, I mean, whether or not they're observers from other member states, I don't know, but this is a meeting of the Libyan, uh, of Libyan parties, as I, I outlined. Okay, and just to expand on Evelyn's question, um, I, I believe I'm correct in this, that Turkey and Russia are now on opposite sides, at least in some respects, in both Syria, Northwest Syria, as well as Libya. Um, so wouldn't the Secretary General himself think in terms of trying to get involved at the highest levels of preventing further fighting in both, in bo in both uh, arenas that maybe he should reach out directly to the presidents of both countries? The, the Secretary General and his uh, staff are very much uh, in contact with various parties. Uh, James and then Stefano. And then Sorry, Colin. back to the um, military meeting in Geneva. I understand that you said that SRSG Salame will give us the substance mm -hmm. of what's been achieved. But in terms of the meeting, what is the information you've got out of UNOG? How long have they met for? Has the meeting been adjourned for the day today? Is the SRSG physically present with those? Yeah, I mean, the, what I, the only thing I can confirm is that the SRSG is physically present present. Uh, any information on, on the meeting will come out of, of Geneva. It so would be I, useful I, if you could ask your Geneva no, no, I, I to know, say be, whether it's been adjourned until tomorrow, because yes, it's now, now 6.30 in Geneva. But they do, they, contrary to popular uh, myth, people do work past 6.30 in Geneva if they, I mean, Are they allowed so, to? <laughs> yes, it is a right to work. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Steph, as a quick follow-up yes. on that, I just got an email from right our Geneva correspondent, mm -hmm. who said that they have a absolutely no information on right. anything. So, so they if you could put in an appeal yes. for some kind of a statement or something to I will, be I, issued today, I will, it would be greatly appreciated. I promise I will appeal. <laughs> Caro Stefano, dicame. Grazie, thank you very much. Is uh, Libya about, about migrants, um, Italy, and Libya just uh, renew with no amendment the, um, the agreement they have on how to handle migrants. Now, um, organization like Amnesty International, for example, he just uh, issued a statement where he says that the renewal of migration deal confirms Italy complicity in tortures of migrants and refugees. What's the reaction of the Secretary General on the renewal of this, look, uh, and on this look, agreement? We, we, I haven't seen the agreement, but what I can tell you is that we have some basic principles that we call on to be respected, which is that the rights of refugees uh, need to be respected, the dignity of migrants need to be respected. And we do not feel, I think as UNHCR and IOM has said repeatedly, that Libya is a, uh, a safe place uh, for migrants or refugees. We're, we've seen in the last few days and repeatedly efforts by various UN organizations to close down the migrants camp and refugee camps, to move people out of Libya. I think there's a program that moves them to Rwanda. Um, so those, those are our basic principles. I can't comment on the agreement itself because I have not uh, seen it. Stefan, just a follow-up <coughs> follow very quick. I understand that you didn't read it, but the, the, it's exactly the same agreement that has been in place for three years 
And the shooter, they said before, Italy said before, that they were going to do amendments, but they didn't. And uh, they promising, oh, well, we will do later. But still, the agreement is exactly the one or three years ago. I'm sure that Secretary General, that, were, that was the director of the UNC NCR, I, I'm sure he knows well, what I, the agreement Well, I think his, uh, what his uh, answer would be very mirrored, would mirror mine. I would hope so, because otherwise I'm in the wrong job. Alan. Thank you, Stefan. Uh, Russian, uh, no government organization, NGO uh, called Foundation, Foundation for National Values Protection. They claim that their two members were seized uh, in Libya by a GNA site. So, uh, largely, uh, they are uh, accused in some attempts to uh, affect the elections in Libya. So according to this uh, NGO, they have uh, submitted the letter to SG. Uh, we haven't calling. seen the letter, but we can look with our colleagues into their case in Libya. Yeah, thank okay. you. Joe. Okay. Uh, I know you read out a statement from uh, UNICEF concerning conditions in Mexico for children. Uh, but does the UN consider overall Mexico to be a safe country uh, for migrants and refugees. You just mentioned Libya as not being safe. Well, I, I mean, I, I you, think there is, by, by, any, any measure of, uh, by any measure, I think there is a uh, very big difference as to the situation in, uh, in Libya and the situation in, in Mexico. I would not want to compare uh, pair the two. I would refer you to UNICEF's, uh, the full UNICEF um, uh, press release whether they also call on the on the Mexican institutions to implement the protection the protocols on the protection of of migrant uh, children don't ever say last uh, one more you. yeah uh, yes one more um, any update about coronavirus have, has, have, is WHO has any uh, message warning. Uh, no, they put out bulletins every day. I, I, they put one already out today. I would refer you to, to them. They're, they're firmly in the Has SG this. personally been involved in any? Like, I mean, he's been in touch so with uh, with Dr. Tedros. Mm -hmm. uh, again, this is a, a medical scientific issue in which WHO is the natural leader within the UN system. So we fully, uh, we obviously fully support them. One message I think is important is that uh, the fight against the coronavirus should not lead to any uh, prejudice, any stigmatization of groups of people or of healthcare uh, workers that human rights need to be respected. Thank you, and uh, hopefully you'll see the boss tomorrow.